First Peter 3, 15 through 16 says, Instead, you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if someone asks about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it. But do this in a gentle and respectful way. Keep your conscience clear. Then if people speak against you, they will be ashamed when they see what a good life you live because you belong to Christ. And today, I'm just grateful for life. I'm grateful for health. I'm grateful for strength. Um, I'm grateful for the word of God. And I'm grateful for just, you know, God believing in me enough to wake me up to see another day to speak to each and every one of you. Um, this particular verse, you know what's so funny about this? I'm almost 100% sure that I've read this before. You know, over the past two or three years from we, um, you know, have started this breakfast in the Bible, I'm pretty sure that I've read a lot of these twice. And, you know, Nikki, um, sister Nikki, she's record all of the stuff that we say and she's been sharing them online. So sometimes I don't even remember because honestly, I don't remember a lot of the things that I say. Um, but what I do before I pray is, is, is most times um, I ask the Holy Spirit to just guide me and let the words be his. Um, so I don't think that I almost ever say the same things twice. But, you know, this particular verse, I was reading it and, and there's so many parts that stood out to me. And it's so funny because... While reading it over back to you guys this morning, something that stood out in it for me, right? So in this particular verse, the author tells us, um, you know, obviously to keep Christ first, to, you know, keep him as the Lord of our life, right? And he says this, he says, and if someone asks about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it, but do this in a gentle and respectful way. And you know why that's so important to do that? And to, to obviously, you know, if someone asks you about your faith, you want to do it in a gentle and respectful way. But what caught me when he said that this, when I reread it this morning, right, is where he says afterwards, he says, keep your conscience clear. Then if people speak against you, they will be ashamed when they see what a good life you live because you belong to Christ. See, because he, what the author was doing here was this, he's giving us room for error. You know, a lot of times, you know, being a Christian, um, we tend to, and you know, we're guilty of this. You know, we, we, none of us missed the mark with this, but we, we tend to be so strong in our conviction of our faith that we, because we know the truth, that we don't allow room for error, Right? And we already have an image to upkeep because, you know, if we say that we Christians and we live a Christ-like life, people are going to always hold us to those standards, you know? And whenever we make decisions, like, people are going to look at the decisions we make and be like, "Was is that what Jesus would have done? And that's why it's so important for us to, when we tell people about our Lord and Savior, we remind people that while we are Christians, Right? It is our desire to live Christ like. You know, we are not Christ Himself. We have to, we are part of the body of Christ, but we are still human and we will fall short of the glory of God. We will make the same mistakes that you make. We will get angry sometimes, we will get jealous, we will feel hurt, we'll feel pain. It may require us to forgive persons the same way we want God to forgive us. But what is important is, is that we don't bash people for who they are. And that we are humble with it, with our speech and we, we're kind when we talk to people and when we let people know about our God, we, we speak about our God and our Savior the same way that he would want, we would want God to speak to us, which is with a tone of kindness and being gentle. Um, you know, it isn't up to us to, to convict people and to accuse persons. And, you know, I, I notice in, in my country, you know, my, my people, <laughs> for being a Christian nation, you know, we, uh, we're very good at accusing persons and not only just accusing persons, but convicting persons without um, having 
all of the evidence, number one. And number two, if someone's lifestyle does not allow with us, align with ours, and we've deemed it a sin, um, we tend to, you know, damn this person to hell without, without thinking to the fact that we are Christians within ourselves and all of us fall short of the glory of God. There's no sin greater than the next, no matter how bad, and no matter how much you think that it is. You know, there's none. I mean, you know, the word of God tells us this consistently. So you can't look at somebody at your neighbor, right? And that's why Jesus said, you know, you got to take the speck of your own eye first. Like you can't look at what your neighbor doing, right? And say that because your neighbor doing this, like the sin that he doing way worse than the sin that you do because there's different moral obligations behind it. No, 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 no. Every single one of them is what can lead you into damnation. There isn't one greater than the next because sin is sin and sin is spiraled out of control. Whether or not there's there's sin further down the mountain from from going or bigger in your eyesight, bigger and faster going down the mountain, it don't matter because if you can still consistently live in your life in sin, you rolling down the same mountain as sin. And it ain't up to you to judge him. You know, so you should be very careful with how you condemn people and not just in your condemnation in, in about when you telling people about you being a believer, because the way that you tell persons that one day that could come back to haunt you, meaning you didn't give persons that room for error for yourself when you was trying to convict them for who they are. So. I just want everyone to go into this meet um, this weekend, um, pray it up, you know, um, obviously keep your eyes focused on Jesus and keep your heart open to live like Jesus. And when you speak to people and when you interact with people, you know, you remain kind and you think to yourself that, you know, what would Jesus do? How would Jesus approach your situation? How, how would he be with me? So thank you everyone for the opportunity to speak. I'm Carrie and Aaron Angles from my